Hey YouTube, this is Print Practical. Today, we're gonna to be modifying my Ender 3 Pro. We're gonna give it a direct drive extruder along with an all metal hot end. So let's jump into it. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing the teardown and I'm going to be installing all of this stuff. Um, I'm also gonna be designing all of the direct drive components myself. So I'll probably dump that into another video. First, I have these new heat brakes. Uh, this essentially converts the hot end to be an all metal hot end, but it's a lot cheaper. It's only $10, I think, for two of these on Amazon. I'll put a link to these in the description, but all you need is a little bit of thermal paste to make sure you got some good heat transfer between the heat sink and this. And then you pretty much have an all metal hot end. We have this new extruder motor, and this thing is tiny compared to the current one on an Ender 3. So that'll help be a lot more helpful because with the direct drive setup, this is going to be sitting on the X axis carriage and we want to be dragging along the least amount of weight as possible. So we're going to have to use that. And lastly, we have this dual gear extruder. Um, this was like $20. It has a three to one gear ratio. So it's going to be able to make that smaller motor a little more torquey and be able to push out the filament a little easier. So that's what we're gonna be using for this setup. Let's start by getting this BL touch off. And also that removed this whole front piece here. So all we have left is to disconnect the hot end and then uh, we should be able to pull this whole thing off. Loosen the belt tensioner. Take the belt off the bottom of the X carriage. All right, and I was just hoping that we could roll the X carriage off, but nope, it hits on the nut of this bottom wheel. So I think I'm just gonna pop one of these wheels off, which will let me easily remove this. And then we're gonna have to redesign it. The X carriage is off. Now let's get to designing. So I'm going to make another video of me designing the whole direct drive setup. I think most people that watch this video just want to come here, download the Thingiverse link, and then watch the video to see how to install it. But for those that are interested in actually watching me design this, then I'm going to make another video, which I'll link here. And I'm going to take this X carriage and I'm going to redesign it in order to hold our new extruder motor and extruder and hopefully you know we end up with a successful direct drive setup so this video is going to continue from the point after i design all that stuff and reassembling it all and the other video will contain the design okay so it's been about a week and it took me about a day and a half to design a new x carriage and we have a new fan cover as well which is pretty sweet because it's got the print practical logo on it so we're ready to go First thing we need to do is we need to break apart this hot end so that we can put the new heat break in there. And then after we're done installing that, we will install our new X carriage and fan shroud and reassemble everything. And then we should be good to go to test. So to break down the hot end, we're gonna first remove this rubber cover off the heat block. And then we have a set screw here that we're going to loosen. Just add a tiny bit. And then we have two screws on the bottom of the heat block. We're going to unscrew those. So now we have the heat sink totally off. And the heater block has the old heat break sticking out of it. So I'm going to turn on the printer and heat up the hot end so that way I can pop the nozzle off. Now the heater block is up to temp, I can loosen the nozzle. So it's about 10 minutes later and I let everything cool down and now I'm just going to try and remove the stock heat break. All right, so I'm back and I got this all loose now. It took a lot. Uh, I actually had to put this in a vise and put a vise grip on the heat break 
to break it loose, but it was really in there. I think Creality put some thread lock or something on there. So anyway, we're gonna continue on. So here are the two different heat breaks. This is the all metal one on the right. And if you take a look on the inside, you can see that there's a lip like right at the top of this heat break. And that is where the Bowden tube stops on this one, as opposed to this one goes really far down, um, probably until that little indent there is where the Bowden tube goes down. So this one is gonna give us more of an all metal hot end. So let's install this. So now it's time to install our new heat break into the heat sink. And we're going to put some thermal paste on the cylindrical part of the heat break uh, in order to get the best heat transfer between the heat sink and the heat break. And then I'm going to tighten this set screw a little bit. I'm not going to tighten it down fully. The camera died there, but I finished wiping all the excess thermal paste off the bottom of the heat sink. So I just tightened up the set screw a little bit, and now it's time to thread this into the heater block. The heat break is bottomed out on the aluminum block. So I'm gonna spin the heat sink to face forward. And then we're going to throw these two screws in. And we're going to take a new 0.4 millimeter nozzle and we're going to install this into the aluminum block. All right, let's install our hot end onto our X carriage. Now I'm going to install the two fans into our new fan shroud. Now we're going to try and figure out how much Bowden tube we need. So I'm going to start by inserting it into the hot end. All right, now I'm going to take this out and I'm going to trim it with a razor blade to get a nice clean edge on it. All right, the Bowden tube is at the correct length now. So I'm going to put the clip in and I'm going to put this little rubber piece on the aluminum block. And now it's time to mount the fan shroud. And now the BL touch. And lastly, let's mount the extruder and the extruder motor. So I just tested the extruder motor. I heated up the hot end and it was moving, so that's good. Um, so next I just need to plug in my BL touch and I also need to put my belt tensioner back on and hook up the belt to the X carriage. And then I think we'll be ready to tune this up.
All right, let's just do a quick movement test. All right, so our direct drive system is installed and done. So we're gonna move this party upstairs. We're gonna bring this printer up and put some filament in it and do some tuning. All right, so that wraps up this project. Uh, it took me about three weeks to complete, but you know, somebody that has a lot of time that they can dedicate to it could probably do it in a day or two. But we were able to successfully convert this to a direct drive setup, and we just did a benchy print that turned out pretty decent. So if you like what you saw here, and you're waiting for the STLs for this direct drive setup, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and I'll make a post when I put those out. If you have any ideas on what you want me to design or create for this 3D printer or any other project, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.